in this 2s orbital two electrons are present so in the excited state what happens is one electron from this jumps to the 2p orbital the orbitals which are formed by the intermixing now that orbitals will have same energy and shape and they are called as hybrid orbitals 1s and 1p they intermix with each other and form hybrid orbitals which is called as sp hybrid orbitals and two sp hybrid orbitals will be formed Hello everyone this is Ambali Unnikrishnan from the department of chemistry Vidyashram school of excellence Mysore so today we are back with session 6 of the chapter chemical bonding and molecular structure so in last class we discussed about valence bond theory we started with the valence bond theory right and then we discussed about directional properties of the bond and we also discussed about the different types of overlapping and the nature of covalent bond right so in this session we are going to study about the next topic that is hybridization and the different types of hybridization we will be discussing right so before moving on to what is hybridization to understand hybridization properly let us take this example of ch4 methane molecule which is familiar for you so now according to vbt yes that is valence bond theory what we have studied the atomic orbitals overlap with each other and what happens the unpaired electrons which is present in each of this atomic orbitals they overlap with each other and what happens they pair up right that is what we have studied so we know that in carbon yes what is the atomic number of carbon it is 6 right so it is 1s2 yes 2s2 and 2p2 is the electronic configuration so considering the valence shell it is 2s and 2p right so we know that it is 2s2 and it is 2p2 so as you can see here i have mentioned that here in ground state it is 2s2 and 2p2 so according to valence bond theory what should be happening here here two unpaired electrons are present in these two orbitals and we know that yes the atomic orbitals containing unpaired electrons will overlap with the other atomic orbitals and they pair up so according to that what must be the molecule which has to be formed here the atomic orbital is this one combines with one hydrogen atom the atomic orbital are having unpaired electron of hydrogen atom and this one also combines with the atomic orbital having one unpaired electron of hydrogen atom and then what happens they overlap with each other and they form the bond right that is according to vbt theory that should be happening so what is the molecule we are supposed to get it will be ch2 but it is highly reactive molecule so what happens ch2 is not at all stable so ch2 doesn't exist okay but what is the molecule that we actually know it is ch4 right so what actually happens here in hybridization is that as you can see in this 2s orbital two electrons are present so in the excited state what happens is one electron from this jumps to the 2p orbital because what you have to understand is 2s and 2p even though there is a very small energy difference between them what happens the 2s orbital from that one electron yes it shifts here it moves to the 2p so what you can say yes in 2s one unpaired electron there and in p orbitals each of them that is in 2px 2py and 2pz each one unpaired electron is there so now according to vbt what happens yes these atomic orbitals as in each of them one unpaired electron is there now what will be formed yes ch4 can be formed right so this process that is happening here it is called as hybridization so what exactly is happening here is that as you can see this 2s and 2p orbitals as they are of comparable energy what happens they intermix with each other right the 2s and 2p they intermix with each other and they form four orbitals right one 2s orbital and three 2p orbitals intermix with each other right and they form orbitals having equal energy right and they form sp3 orbitals what exactly is sp3 and all we'll discuss in this session no need to worry about that so these four sp3 orbitals will be formed so 1s and 3p it forms four 
right so that means 1 uh, 2 is orbital and 3 2p orbital means a total of 4 right so if four of them are combining yes four of the orbitals should be formed right so these orbitals which are formed by the intermixing it is called as hybrid orbitals right so now these four hybrid orbitals which are formed by the intermixing of 2s and 2p they will take part in the bond formation okay instead of the atomic orbitals taking part in bond formation what happens they intermix with each other form hybrid orbitals which you can see here and they take part in bond formation. So, in this case that is how the methane molecule is formed which is having an angle of 109.5 degree. I hope it is clear. So, let us move on to the details of hybridization. Okay. So, what exactly is hybridization? It is the process of intermixing of orbitals of slightly different energies as to redistribute their energies resulting in the formation of new set of orbitals having equivalent energies and shape. They are called as hybrid orbitals, right? So, it is the intermixing of orbitals which are having slightly different energy change only. In the case of CH4 that we discussed, 2s and 2p, they have only slight energy change. So, 2s and 2p, they only have very small energy difference. So, what happens 2s and 2p, the s and p orbital intermix with each other and they form equivalent number of orbitals which are having same energy and same shape. So, the orbitals which are formed by the intermixing, now that orbitals will have same energy and shape and they are called as hybrid orbitals. Okay. So, the features of hybridization is very important. So, orbitals having almost equal energy take part in the hybridization. So, as I said 2s and 2p, they have almost equal energy even if there is a small difference. Yes, almost equal energy. So, they combine. That does not mean any atomic orbitals can combine with each other and form hybrid orbitals. They need to have comparable energy. Understood? Next is number of hybrid orbitals produced is equal to the number of atomic orbitals mixed. Okay. So, two orbitals if they are intermixing with each other, yes, how many hybrid orbitals will be formed? Two hybrid orbitals will be formed. So, in this case where we have discussed one 2s, yes, 1s orbital and 3p orbitals were combining. So, a total of 4 hybrid orbitals are formed. 1, 2, 3 and 4, right? Yes. So, the next one is geometry of molecules can be indicated by the type of hybridization. So, we will be studying about the different types of hybridization here and based on the type of hybridization, we will be able to predict the geometry of the molecule. Right. And the last one, the hybrid orbitals are more effective in forming stable bonds than pure atomic orbitals. Right. So, why exactly the hybridization process is happening here? Yes, the atomic orbitals can also overlap with atomic orbitals and form bonds, right? That is what we studied till now. But hybrid orbitals that is formed by the intermixing of these orbitals, they are able to form more stable bonds than pure atomic orbitals. So, what happens? Atomic orbitals, they intermix with each other, they form hybrid orbitals, okay? And these hybrid orbitals will go for bond formation. I hope it is clear. Now, let us discuss on the different types of hybridization. So, now there are few conditions for hybridization process to happen. So, the first one is orbitals of valence shell take part in hybridization. Okay. As you know, only the valence electrons present in the valence shell take part in the bond formation. So, the orbitals of valence shell take part in hybridization, right? The inner shells and inner electrons, they do not take part in uh, bond formation, the, which is present in the outermost shell take part, right? So, hence orbitals of valence shell take part in hybridization. Now, orbitals involved in hybridization should have almost equal energy. Right. So, only those atomic orbitals will combine which is having almost equal energy. As said, 2s and 2p are able to intermix with each other. But let us take the case of 2s and 3d. Right. We know that there is a vast energy difference in there. Okay. So, they do not intermix and form hybrid orbitals. I hope it is clear. Now, in some cases, filled orbitals of valence shell also take part in hybridization. Now, what about this? We studied in valence bond theory. Right. In the beginning, we studied that, yes, atomic orbitals having unpaired electrons, right, they only take part in 
yes the overlapping of atomic orbitals right but in the case of hybridization even if it is filled okay that is even if it is not having unpaired electrons even if it is filled still it will take part in hybridization so the conditions are clear for you so now we are going to discuss about the different types of hybridization so the first one is sp hybridization so as you can see sp that means one s orbital and one p orbital they undergo hybridization and form how many hybrid orbitals two hybrid orbitals right so one s and one p orbital hybridizes to form equivalent energy orbitals and it is called as sp hybrid orbital so how many sp hybrid orbitals will be formed two sp hybrid orbitals right one s and one p that means two so one s and one p they intermix with each other and form hybrid orbitals which is called as sp hybrid orbitals and two sp hybrid orbitals will be formed i hope it is clear now let's take an example and understand okay so sp hybridization in sp hybridization it contains 50 percentage of s character and 50 percentage of p character yes s and p one s and one p is intermixing right so that means yes it is 50 percentage of it will be having s character and 50 percentage will be p character and the molecules which are having sp hybridization they have linear geometry yes linear geometry means we know that the angle will be 180 degree right so let's take an example and understand of becl2 beryllium chloride so we know that for beryllium in ground state the electronic configuration is 1s2 2s2 okay so in excited state what happens yes from this 2s2 orbital we know that yes in 2s2 orbital two electrons will be there right so what happens in excited state one electron from that will move on to the 2p orbital so as you can see here it was 2s2 in the ground state now in the excited state one electron from there goes to the 2p orbital right so now what happens one 2s and one 2p orbital they are intermixing with each other one electron from here transferred to here so what happens one s and one p orbital they are intermixing with each other and they are forming two sp hybrid orbitals okay so in this diagram as you can see one s orbital and one p orbital they hybridize and form two sp hybrid orbitals now these two sp hybrid orbitals that that you can see for beryllium it will have now two sp hybrid orbitals one is present here and one here these are the two hybrid orbitals okay two sp hybrid orbitals so now what happens these hybrid orbital will combine with the atomic orbital of chlorine right so as you can see now it combines with the atomic orbital of chlorine and the electron pairs up so now as we know that is it is axial overlapping so a sigma bond will be formed right so one sigma bond will be formed here and one sigma bond will be formed here so you can write it as this right so what is the geometry here it will be linear geometry having an angle 180 degree okay so these two that is represented here they, those are the two sp hybrid orbital okay that is clear now let's take one more example yes of acetylene that is c2h2 we are going to discuss so in the case of carbon so we know that in ground state the electronic configuration is 1s2 2s2 2p2 okay yes so in the excited state what happens yes from here from the 2s the electron jumps to this 2p okay so now what happens in here also it is sp hybridization that means the 1s orbital and this 1p orbital just the 1p orbital they intermix and form two sp hybrid orbitals okay now that take part in bond formation that is sigma bond formation so as you can see here in this diagram yes in both carbons two sp hybrid orbitals will be there so in this carbon right this is the one sp hybrid orbital and this is the other sp hybrid orbital in this carbon this is one sp orbital and this is one sp hybrid orbital clear now what about the rest okay these two p orbitals you can see here they do not take part in hybridization so these two orbitals will be used for pi bonds okay so we know that what is acetylene c2h2 means 
it is C triple bond. Yes, and it's bounded with two hydrogen atoms. Okay, so one will be a sigma bond that is formed from the sp hybrid orbital. As you can see, one sp, one sp here, and for this carbon, these are the two represented. Now, what happens? These two sp hybrid orbitals, yes, forms a sigma bond here. Okay, now the two p orbitals which did not take part in hybridization, these two which did not take part in hybridization, they undergo sidewise overlapping. We know sidewise overlapping means pi bond is formed, right? They undergo sidewise overlapping and forms pi bond. So, as you can see here, this is 1p orbital and this is 1p orbital of this carbon atom. This is 1p orbital and this is 1p orbital of another carbon atom. So, now what happens? They overlap sideways. As you can see, they overlap sideways and form two pi bonds, right? Yes. On the top, you can see, yes, that is pi bond. And here also it is pi bond and in between a sigma bond. So, how is triple bond formed? One sigma and two pi bond, right? And the other sp hybrid orbital which is present here, it binds with the hydrogen atom, yes, and forms again a sigma bond. And here also it binds with the atomic orbital of hydrogen and forms a sigma bond. So, you can see here, here a sigma bond is formed, here also sigma is formed, right? And here also one sigma is bond and Two pi bonds are formed, right? So, I hope it is clear. So, this is hybridization in the case of acetylene. Now, moving on to the next type that is sp2 hybridization. So, from the name itself, you can understand sp2 hybridization. That means one s orbital and two p orbitals intermix and form how many, right? One s and two p. That means, yes, a total of three hybrid orbitals will be formed. Yes, one as in two p orbitals hybridized to form three equivalent sp2 hybridized orbitals, right? It forms three sp2 hybridized orbitals and all three orbitals make an angle of 120 degree. In the case of sp hybridization, it is 180 degree. In sp2, it is 120 degree and it forms trigonal planar geometry. Okay, it forms trigonal planar geometry. As you can see here, 1s and 2p orbitals, they hybridize and form 1, 2, 3. 3 sp2 hybrid orbitals, which is represented like this and which is having an angle of 120 degree. Clear? Now, let's take an example of BCL3. Okay, BCL3 we are going to discuss. So, in the case of boron, yes, we know that. What is the electronic configuration? It is 1s2, 2s2 and 2p1. It is 1s2, 2s2 and 2p1, right? So, this is in the ground state. In excited state, what happens? Yes, from the 2s orbital, one electron moves to the 2p orbital. That is what is shown here. From 2s, one electron moves to the 2p orbital. So, now what happens? 1s orbital and 2p orbitals will intermix and form how many sp2 orbitals will be formed? Yes, 3 sp2 hybridized orbitals will be formed. 1s and 2p are combining, that means 3 orbitals, right? So, if 3 are combining, that means how many will be formed? Yes, 3 hybrid orbitals will be formed. So, 3 sp2 hybrid orbitals will be formed. So, as you can see here, Yes, this is the 1 sp2 hybrid orbital, this is 1 sp2 hybrid orbital and this is 1 sp2 hybrid orbital. Now, that will overlap with the atomic orbitals of chlorine and as you can see here, it is sideways overlapping. So, yes, 3 sigma bonds will be formed, right? So, as you can see here, 1 Cl, 1 Cl and 1 Cl bond with an bond angle of 120 degree will be formed. I hope it is clear. So, now let us take one more example that is hybridization or the formation of ethylene that is C2H4, right? So, we are going to discuss that. So, in the case of carbon, again we know that in the ground state it is 1s2, 2s2, 2p2, right? So, in the excited state what happens? From 2s, one electron goes to the 2p. So, as you can see now it will be in this state. Right? In the ground state, it is 1s2, 2s2, 2p2 and in the excited state from this 2s orbital, one electron goes to 2p. So, what happens? It becomes 1s2, 
2s1, 2px1, 2py1 and 2pz1. That's what you can see here. So now what happens? We know that 1s and 2p orbitals, this 1s and 2p orbitals, they will intermix and form 3 sp2 hybrid orbitals. And this one, which that is the last p orbital, that do not take part in hybridization. And that means do not take part in hybridization means, yes, that will form the pi bond. Okay, so as I said, three hybrid orbitals will be formed, right? So one is here, one here and one here for this carbon atom and for this carbon atom, one here, one here and one here. Yes, and the p orbital which is not taking part in hybridization that is present here. One p orbital of this carbon atom and one p orbital of this carbon atom. Yes, so now what happens? Yes, these two hybrid sp2 hybrid orbitals, they combine and forms a sigma bond there, right? Now, the next sp2 hybrid orbital of this carbon atom, that combines with the orbital of hydrogen atom and forms a sigma bond there, right? And here also it combines with the atomic orbital of hydrogen and forms a sigma bond. Here also sigma bond, here also sigma bond. And even here a sigma bond is formed. Right. Now, what about the p orbital which is not taking part in hybridization? Right. They sideways overlap. Yes. They overlap sideways and forms. Yes. And it forms a pi bond. Right. So, how you can write the structure? It will be C double bond and two hydrogen atoms on each side. Right. Yes. So, all this. This is a sigma bond. This is a sigma this is sigma, this is sigma and one of it is sigma and the next one is formed by the sideways overlapping or uh, that is pi bond, right? From where it is coming? Yes, the p orbital which is not taking part in hybridization. So now moving on to the next one, sp3 hybridization. So I hope by this time you can predict, right? sp3 hybridization means, yes, one s orbital and three p orbitals intermix and form how many, right? One s and three p. That means, yes, four sp3 hybrid orbitals will be formed, right? So, 1s and 3p orbitals get hybridized to form 4 equivalent hybrid orbitals. So, that means 1s and 3p is combining means, yes, 25 percentage will be s character and 75 percentage will be p character, right? And it will be having a tetrahedral geometry. So, let's take the same example that we have discussed in the beginning of methane. So, before that, you can see here, right, 1s Yes, and the px, py and pz orbital, that is all the three p orbitals combine and form, yes, as you can see, four sp3 hybrid orbitals, right, one, two, three and four, four hybrid orbitals are formed. Right. So, coming on to methane, we know that in the ground state, the electronic configuration is 1s2, 2s2 and 2p2. So, in the excited state, what happens? Yes, in the excited state, what happens from the 2s, 1 electron moves to 2p. So, now what you can say, right, 1s orbital and these all these 3p orbitals, right. So, the 4 of these orbitals, that is 1s orbital, and 3p orbitals, they intermix with each other, that is they undergo hybridization and they will form 4 sp3 hybrid orbitals, right. They form 4 sp3 hybrid orbitals that you can see here, this is 1, 2, 3 and 4, okay. Now, 4 hybrid orbitals are formed. Now, we are considering methane, right, CH4. Now, what happens? It combines with the, that is the uh, atomic orbital of hydrogen atom that overlaps with these hybrid orbitals of carbon. Now, what happens here? A sigma bond is formed here, sigma, here, sigma and here, sigma, right? So, in this case, that is all p orbitals are taking part in hybridization. So, no pi bond is formed, right? All the four are sigma bonds and yes, as you can see here, the bond angle will be 109.5 degree. Right. So, that is a tetrahedral structure of methane. Now, let us take the example of sp3 hybridization in the case of ethane that is C2H6 we are going to discuss here. Yes. So, the sp3 hybridization in this case we are going to see. So, again in the excited state we know that this is the electronic configuration of carbon in the excited state. Right. This s orbital and these three p orbitals will undergo hybridization and that will form 4 sp3 hybrid orbitals, right? 4 sp3 hybrid orbitals that you can see here. For this carbon atom, 1, 2, 3 and 4. 
right and for this carbon atom 1 2 3 and 4 Okay, so four hybrid orbitals are formed. Now this sp3 hybrid orbital will overlap with the atomic orbital of hydrogen, right? So a sigma bond is formed here, here also sigma, here also sigma, right? In the same way, a sigma bond here, sigma bond here, sigma bond here, right? And in between the carbon atoms, again a sigma bond is formed, right? Clear? So what will be the final structure you can see? Yes, it is C. 2H6, right? So, in between the carbon atoms, there is a sigma bond and between the carbon and hydrogen, each of the carbon and hydrogen, a sigma bond is formed. And hence, it is C2H6. No double bonds or triple bonds present here, right? All the bonds formed are sigma bonds. So, I hope you are clear with SP, SP2 and SP3 hybridization and the examples that we have discussed in this hybridization. So, in the next session, we will be discussing about the hybridization which is involving SP and D orbitals. Today, we discussed SP, SP2 and SP3, right? There were no D orbitals included. Now, in the next session, we will be discussing about, yes, SP and D orbitals where D orbitals also take part in hybridization, right? And then finally, we will be discussing about the limitations of valence bond theory. So, I hope what and all we have discussed in this session is clear for you. So, that's all for today. Thank you.